Hi class, welcome to Advantage. My name is Matt Fisher and I'm going to be your accounting instructor. In this video today, we're going to go over several transactions. This video is actually a continuation of the previous video, the accounting equation. If you recall, in the accounting equation, we went over two transactions. And now we're going to continue with several more transactions just to make sure that you understand really well how the accounting equation works and how transactions fit in the accounting equation. All right, let's take a look at transaction number three. Now, before we take a look at this transaction, you can see here that we already have beginning balances of 54,000 in assets, 4,000 in liabilities, and 50,000 in the equity section. Once again, this carried over from the previous video. Now in this transaction, transaction number three, what's taking place is that we're purchasing some equipment for cash. And this equipment's costing $10,000. So what's taking place here is cash is going down. We're decreasing cash because we're buying the equipment. Equipment is an asset also like cash. Equipment is going up. So our value for cash is going down. Our value for equipment is going up. You can see at the bottom, the ending balances didn't change because this transaction all took place under assets. One asset increased, one decreased. And that's perfectly fine as long as our transaction balances still. And as you can see, it does. All right, let's move on to transaction number four. In this transaction, what's taking place is the business is borrowing $15,000 in cash from the bank. All right, so take a look at this transaction and think about what's taking place here. All right, there are two things taking place. Where the business is receiving $15,000 in cash. So cash is increasing. Then also on the other side of the accounting equation, our liabilities are increasing because the business now owns $15,000 more to another entity, to the bank. So you can see here, our accounting equation is in balance. 15,000 equals 15,000 with regards to this transaction. But also you can see under the ending balance that we're also still in balance because now our assets are 69,000 in total. Our liabilities are now 19,000. And if you recall, that's 15,000 for this loan. And then also 4,000 accounts payable from the previous lecture. And equity stayed the same at 50,000. Okay, let's move on to transaction number five. Under this transaction, we're performing some consulting work and we're receiving cash. This is something new. Consulting work so, is something that a business does, okay? This, this business that we're looking at does work like consulting and this is revenue, okay? So this account's gonna go underneath the equity section, if you recall, Revenue is part of equity, all right? So what's happening here is since we're receiving cash, cash is going up $4,000. So you can see that increase. And then also you can see that revenue under equity is increasing. This revenue belongs to the owners of the business and it increases their value under equity. And that's how we place it there. You can see that the accounting equation, once again, is still in balance at the end of this transaction. All right, let's move on to transaction number six. This one's similar to transaction five, except instead of receiving the cash, we're gonna do the consulting work on credit, meaning these customers are gonna pay us later. This is still a transaction when we're looking at accrual basis accounting. So what I'm saying here is if we're doing accrual basis accounting, if we've done the work and we've earned that revenue, we get to record the transaction. So in this case, uh, this consulting work is for $3,000. I'm not sure if I said that before. It's for $3,000. So our accounts receivable will go up $3,000. See, previously cash went up because we received the cash. In this case, we're not receiving the cash. So the accounts receivable is increasing $3,000. If you recall, accounts receivable is when somebody owes us money. They have an account with us and they owe us $3,000. Revenue also increases, just like the previous transaction. And you can see there at the bottom that that total assets increased to 76,000. Liabilities did not change, they're 19,000, but equity has gone up to 57,000 from 54,000. 
Let's look at transaction number seven. In transaction seven, we've got a partial payment of $3,000 on our accounts payable. From the previous lecture, our accounts payable balance was $4,000, meaning we owed somebody $4,000. And now we're paying $3,000 of it. So what's happening here is that uh, the cash will go down because we're paying this. So cash decreases $3,000. Our accounts payable, our liability is also decreased because of this. So our liability goes down $3,000. So then our balance, as you can see, there are $73,000 for assets, $16,000 for liabilities, and $57,000 for equity. All right, let's move on to transaction eight. Here we're paying our utility bill and the utility bill is for $1,000 in cash. So cash goes down 1,000 and now here's something new for us. We have utility expense. So we've got an expense account that's part of equity and it reduces the equity. Since we're paying a bill that reduces the equity balance of the owners. So this expense has to be a negative dollar amount here in this transaction. All right, so you can see now that our total assets are now 72,000, our uh, liabilities are 16,000, and our equity is 56,000. All right, let's move on to transaction number nine. In this transaction, the owner is withdrawing $3,000 in cash for personal reasons. In this transaction, cash goes down because cash is leaving the business and going to the owner, and then the equity account has to be re reduced because the owner's taking $3,000 out of the business. So under withdrawals, we'll show a negative $3,000 that represents this withdrawal uh, to the owner. And then you can see that our ending balances are all in balance still because our transaction itself was in balance. All right, there are the remaining transactions from that last chapter and this chapter. Uh, for the next lecture, you want to make sure, before you go on to the next lecture, you want to make sure that you understand these transactions really well. Make sure you understand that accounting equation backwards and forwards and every single one of these transactions. Because most transactions will be some sort of variation of these nine transactions that we have gone over. So you really want to make sure you understand them. In the next video, we're going to be introducing debits and credits. This concept is a little bit difficult. And you have to understand really well your accounting equation and transactions before you can really grasp the debits and credits. All right, class, I hope you understood this video and good luck on the next.